We live in a stormy world, a world of constant change. It was in that chant we chanted just now about aging, illness, and death, separation. Which, when you think about it only that far, it gets pretty depressing. But fortunately, we don't have to think about it only that far. We can think a little further. Like in the other chant, may I be happy. The Buddha has us respect that wish for true happiness. And he points out the way to true happiness, which is through our own actions. The part that says, I'm the owner of my actions, heir to my actions. This is what we can depend on. So even though our actions change, we try to develop a certain amount of constancy in the mind. This is why we're practicing concentration, focusing on the breath. Staying with the breath as it comes in, staying with the breath as it goes out, and doing what we can to make it easy to stay with the breath. Part of that involves allowing the breath to be comfortable and having it the sense that the, the breath is not just air coming in and out of the lungs, but learning how to perceive the breath as the whole energy flow in the body. How do the different parts of the body feel during the in-breath? Do you tend to tense up around your neck or in your shoulders? Can you breathe in in a way where you don't tense up? It's all connected. Your posture, the way you breathe, the way the blood flows through the body. So you can explore this as a way of making it easier to stay here. Another way of making it easier to stay here is have the right view about what you're doing. It may seem a little thing, just keeping the mind in one spot. You can think of all the other things you might be doing right now, all the other responsibilities you have, and that can pull you away. Because it's not just greed, anger, and delusion that pulls us away. It's also it says, well, I've got to think about this, I've got to prepare for that, I've got all these other responsibilities out there in the world. Things you've got to prevent, things you've got to encourage. But when you think in those ways, you're neglecting one of your major responsibilities, which is that if you're going to do anything effective, anything skillfully, the mind has to have a good, solid basis inside. It's like the post, like a post at the edge of the sea. If your post is planted firmly down in the sand, even better if it's firmly, firmly planted down into the rock below the sand, and the waves come in and the waves go out. But the post doesn't go in, doesn't go out. You can use that post for lots of useful things. It can become a post on which you build a house. It can become a post on which you tie up your, your boat so the boat doesn't get washed out to sea. And the post itself doesn't get damaged much by the waves. If you take your post and <coughs> lie it down on the edge of the the ocean, thinking that well, by laying it down there, you can prevent the waves from coming in much better than when it's standing in one spot. What happens, of course, is that the post gets washed in, washed out, and after a while it gets smashed against some rocks someplace. In other words, if you take on too many responsibilities out in the world, but don't have a firm foundation for the mind, the mind ends up getting smashed on the rocks. And it's of no use to anybody. So even though you may be focused on one small point right here, just on the breath and the body, either the whole body or if you can't manage the whole body, just find one spot where you can hang on and be aware of the energy right there. It may seem like you're neglecting your other responsibilities, but you're not. You're providing a solid foundation for the mind. And a mind with a solid foundation is a lot more useful, both for you and for the people around you. 
take this as your first responsibility. Because there's really only so much you can do for the world. You think about other people you'd like to help, but there are areas of their minds, areas of their experience where you can't reach, where you can't touch them at all. You see this very clearly when someone is sick, is suffering in pain. You can't go in and help share out the pain. You may be able to give them a medicine that helps relieve the pain somewhat, but sometimes there's a lot of pain that goes beyond the reach of any morphine or any opium, any painkiller at all. And that's where that person has to be responsible for him or herself. You see this in other people, and it should remind you that you're going to have to face up with those issues someday yourself. And that's an area where we, each of us has to be responsible. If we can be responsible about how we handle our pain, it's a lot easier on the people around us. And after all, it is our responsibility. We're, after all, we're the ones who chose to be born here. It was because of our desires and our, our cravings that we took birth as human beings. When you're responsible for birth, then you also have to be responsible for how you handle your aging, your illness, and your death. They all come part of the same package. And so the point from which you're going to learn how to handle these things is this point right here, as you're focused on the breath, focused in the present moment, learning how to let go of all your other wrong views, all your other distractions, all the other things that you might cling to that are going to end up getting you smashed against the rocks. So try to maintain this spot. Think of it as a post planted against the waves of the ocean. Even though the post gets knocked over, you realize that it sh you shouldn't let it stay knocked over. You know that it's in a better position when it's standing up, planted down and deep into the sand. Just knowing that much can help a lot. Otherwise you feel you owe it to other people to let your post lie down in the waves, thinking that the post somehow will protect them from the force of the waves. But what happens is sometimes the waves come behind the post and push up against other people. So it's both for your own good and for the good of the people around you that you try to keep this post firmly planted right here. And try to keep your views right. There's a lot out there in the world that you cannot change. There's a lot that you can't even know. Kierkegaard once said, we live life forward, but we understand backwards. In other words, there are a lot of decisions that we have to make right now, but we don't really know what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, next month, next year. We can look back on decisions we made in the past and say, well, gee, that shouldn't have thought. We shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have said this. And in some cases, we made the wrong decision fully knowing what we were doing. But a lot of times, we made that wrong decision because we couldn't know. And that kind of decision is something you can't blame anybody for. Nobody can blame you. You can't blame anybody else. So you have to leave that to being uncertain. It's part of the winds and the waves. Like tonight's weather forecast, they say there may be a storm coming in. We don't know for sure. We do our best to prepare. And if the storm doesn't come in, what do we say? Well. It was a waste of time, a waste of energy. We could have done other things. That's not the right attitude. You prepare as best you can. And as for the things you don't know, you just let them, let them go. What you do know are certain basic principles. If you can develop more mindfulness, more alertness, more concentration in the mind, more discernment, you'll be better prepared for handling things as they come up. Even if you don't know ahead of time what they are, what they'll be, 
if you've got these qualities developed in the mind, you'll be in a better position to handle things. And one way of developing these qualities is through giving the mind one place to stay and then maintaining that in the face of all the other things that might come to knock it over. In some cases that requires just being mindful and alert to what's happening. In other cases it requires more discernment. Catching the currents of the mind that would knock you over. And learning how to resist the ones that say, you really ought to think about this, you really ought to worry about that. You're sitting here with your eyes closed, focusing on your breath, you're ignoring your responsibilities. You've got to learn how to be able to argue with those thoughts so they don't overcome the mind. So remember the post at the edge of the sea. It was just lying down there in the sand. The waves come up. The post gets washed back and forth. If there's someone standing on the beach, maybe the post can hurt them. And as I said, if there are rocks on the beach, the waves might wash the post up against the rocks, smash it. You don't want that. If your post is planted firmly there at the edge of the water, it's a lot more use both for yourself and for the people around you. So have a sense of the value of staying firmly planted right here, focused right here, developing this as a skill. Getting the mind as constant as possible. And we know that the constancy that you create through concentration like this cannot be totally constant. After all, you're building your path here out of what are called aggregates. And as I would have said, all these aggregates are inconstant, stressful, and not self. So, but we're resisting that to some extent. We know that we can't ultimately make our state of concentration permanent. But what we're doing is giving the mind the strength it needs in order to let go. Of things that cause harm, of things that cause suffering. Because we are letting go out of strength. We don't let go out of weakness. When people let go out of weakness, there's an element of sour grapes. There's an element of dissatisfaction. Which means that they don't really let go. They're hoping for some other time when they can latch on again. If you let go out of strength, you realize, okay, these things have taken the mind this far and they can take it no further. And the only thing that's keeping you from going further is the fact that you're holding on. That's when you let go out of strength. When you let go in that way, you find that there is something deep down in the mind that is constant, totally free from stress. It's beyond even the issues of self and not self. That's something that can't be affected by the wind or waves at all. The image they have in the text is of a stone post on a mountain planted down on the rock. Sixteen spans tall. Eight spans are buried in the rock. Eight spans are up above the level of the ground. And no matter which direction the wind comes from, it can't make the post shake at all. But until you can get to that point, you can use your post at the edge of the ocean. So said it may get knocked over every now and then, but you know well enough that once it's knocked over, you plant it down in the sand again. And even just that much can help you through a lot. It can help eliminate a lot of suffering. Even before you come to the end of suffering, you can learn how to eliminate a lot. And that's quite an accomplishment right there. 